So a thing that we both get asked a lot, um, whether it be on Facebook, on Vampire Freaks, through Tumblr pages, anything, is we are constantly asked, we and pretty much any alternative model, yeah. is constantly asked, how do I get to be an alternative model? How did you get there? Or what? some tips, how do you do... Tips. How are you comfortable? <laughs> Who do you talk to? How do you start? What's the yeah. first thing that you do? What don't you do? Just basically yeah. just any variation of, of that one. question. They just want to know how do I wake up tomorrow and be an alternative model. <laughs> Which I feel like honestly a lot of the people who do ask that want that answer. And that's yeah. true. And, I, and, and like a lot of times if you tell people the, the, truth. the truth, they get mad at you. And I've had people get mad at me before. Just be like, okay, thanks, whatever. I've had yeah, people get mad at me want before. that to be the answer. Right. So, there's kind of two ways to go about this, and I'll go through the first one really quick because this, this is not the one I recommend, it's not the one that either of us did, but the first thing that you can do, if you really want pictures like we have, you find a photographer, you find a makeup artist, you find a wardrobe stylist, you find a hairstylist, and you pay $1,000, and you have everybody make you look perfect, look exactly how you want, buy you the exact clothes you want, do the setup that you want, and... And this is without any prior experience. Yeah. This is what you just will have to do if you want to jump in, get it done, of that standard. You, you're just... You're gonna pay. You're gonna pay for it. There's no possible way that you're gonna wake up tomorrow and have modeling pictures like her pictures, like my pictures. And it's what not some gonna people happen. actually call that is paying your dues. Like, literally, because you have to pay your way maybe to have a portfolio and then that way you can jump into getting a higher caliber of contacts. Yeah. But that's not how most people do it. It's not necessarily the worst idea, but I think that it's... I think to sustain a more developed modeling career and a more fulfilling modeling career and a more respected modeling career, that's not what you should do. I mean, if, if you just want to have some cool pictures, you don't care about modeling, you just say... And you just want to experience you just want, it? Yeah, you want to just do it the one time or maybe a couple times and you have money to or spend... Or even you want a quick start and you yep. have money, then fair enough. Because yeah, I mean, having some nice pictures and putting them in a portfolio is not the worst thing, but, you know, models talk and we we know each other and when, especially like we live by New York City you know we, we have tons of alternative model friends we have tons of people who want to be alternative models we we know what goes on we do and if you're if you're the new model who just popped out of nowhere and you have a bunch of amazing photos we know you paid for them and if you pay one of our friends we know you paid for them because we know the photographers in <laughs> yeah. the area and we're friends with all the photographers right in the and, area. and we know that you don't just pop up out of nowhere and become a perfect professional quality photo with an amazing portfolio out of nowhere. Your first photo shoot is not going to look like either of our most recent photo shoots. It's just not going to happen. Unless you are the most beautiful person in the world with the best luck and you won the lottery, it's just not going to happen. Some people are naturals, but still, it's, it's, yeah. it's a it's learn over time kind of. It's a hit or miss. Like you build your experience and your network in time and you need to be patient and it's okay. <laughs> So the first thing that we're recommending that you do, assuming you want to do this, what we what we would consider the right way. <laughs> now again, we the way most of the people we, we know. Right. Do it. Now again, this is just this is our opinion. This is the opinion of most people we know. It's not it, the only way. Not it's the only way. The way that we have experienced to be the best and or not the best. Right. And the way that we we are suggesting. Right. And we're not saying that you're wrong if you do it another way. We're just saying in our experience, this is probably your best way to get Break to a in. point like we we were at and it's you know we understand that people are probably going to disagree with us and that's fine this is just again it's our special. opinion and in our experience so the first thing that you should do is let's say tomorrow you wake up let's say you're 17 and you're like you know what in a couple of years I want to be doing what Chloe and Porphy are doing and I want and I want to be modeling like that the first thing that you should do is probably either have your boyfriend, a trusted friend, your mother, you know, somebody who you're close with and comfortable with. Somebody you feel really comfortable around and say, you know what? You can be silly around and Yeah, that like you're very, vulnerable. very, very comfortable around. Like, the most comfortable person you can think of that you're not going to be embarrassed by anything and you want them to take pictures of you. And, I mean, maybe don't use your cell phone if you can avoid it. You know, I understand everybody doesn't Try have a the DSLR best camera. Thing you can get. But you know, you have at your... most cameras these days are like most point and shoot cameras are still pretty decent. Like I mean, mm -hmm. technology has came a long way. And even if you buy the cheapest camera, and even even, and that's even, not even some cell it's, it's not necessarily about it being high end. It's about practice. That's... Right. 
and getting comfortable in your own skin and so you have someone you trust taking these pictures and you just be silly and hammy and put on some outfits mm -hmm. and it's also a time to experiment and figure yeah. out poses, figure out clothing, maybe style. I mean, I'd say the most important thing about that is the lighting. I mean, don't just walk into your room and say, hey mom, take some pictures of me against this blank wall. That's probably 95% of the time not the best idea. Because you're experimenting with right, what your face looks best with, what kind light, of angles, like, and you're going to think about the light. Na uh, like, a uh, normal environmental light is not photo shoot light. It's not flattering light. It's not the kind of light you want to be in. Your best, best, best bet is go outside. For yeah. if you don't know that much about lighting. Right. So you want to avoid very, very, very harsh, like, you know, when the sun shines in a window and you'll see, like, that strip of light. Don't stand in that. That's gonna make your face go away if, if you're a light skin like one of us. Like <laughs> it's gonna go away. So just just look around and even like look at look look at your hands. So like put your hands up in front of you and look at them. Does this look like an even light on me? Does if this you look see like a an hot light on spot me? and then a dark yeah, comparatively? Like you way. don't want this this dark shadow here to be across your face and have a black have half of your face be shadow, half of your face not. Just just look. It, it, it is something that is an acquired... It takes acquired... a long time, but yeah. it's, you want some base familiarity with what what's good for your for your own personal lighting and how, how to face the light to get mm -hmm. your best light. But again, not not don't, don't look at the sun. That's yeah. not going to be the best light. In my experience as a photographer, a lot of times when it's bright out, shade is actually the best light. Because out because you're still outside. The, the strongest possible light you can get is the sun. I, I mean, I, I may be naive to this, but I'm... I'd say I'm 99% sure that you're not going to get anything that's going to blow you out or make you... There's certain times of day you yeah, want to avoid, the, but... Yeah, the, the sun is the brightest thing. A, a sun can outpower the sta a normal photography light. So it's very simple to work with the sun. And yes, it's, it's an acquired um, knowledge and it does take experimentation, but it's not rocket science to just look at shadows and just and just, and yeah, just, 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 uh, just don't don't stand there. we're not considering this to be professional modeling we're considering oh, this no, to be a time to just figure out like what your style is and how you if you enjoy it and then that's your first kind of just like step yeah like go in your room pick out your favorite outfit think about it does, does this look cute can this be a photo shoot outfit you want makeup to match it you want hair to match it you want and to we're talking some effort like, into it yeah this is your first go at yeah, this is just Never... this is a, an attempt out of what a photo shoot would even feel like. Play and pretend. Just you're having fun. totally pretend. And again, the most important part is that you're with somebody you're comfortable with. Because if you're standing there and you feel awkward and you feel silly and you feel ridiculous, not, not in a fun. good way, not in a not in a like lighthearted like, good way, you feel like uh, this is uh, no. You have to find somebody you're comfortable with. And if you don't have somebody you're comfortable with, get a tripod and try, try it. Just, just just try it. Just get out there and try it. But you know. I digress on the situation. The, the whole point. Of digress. Yes, <laughs> there's, there's so many. There's digression. so many aspects of this. Um, you just want to get some pictures that show you as best as you can with the situation you're currently in, and, the, and that will be your your tough. baseline yeah. then. For do you think like for profiles then that you start with or not even well, then yet? We used to be like maybe three, four years ago, yeah. the standard advice we would probably both give anybody is just make an account on Model Mayhem and go from there. Modelmayhem.com, it's just, just, it's like just Facebook do it. for model, for creative Do folks. it and go from there. The problem lies in that now is that Model Mayhem has changed their rules or their ruling or They're however they do. They're invite only, I believe. I don't, it might be or invite only. Whatever somewhere. it is, is, it's not as easy to just make an account. Like back when we started Model Mayhem, like if you look at like our Model Mayhem numbers, they're like much lower in the numbers because <laughs> we've had them for, I've had mine for nine years. Yeah, probably had like that, longer. Yeah. And now they just don't do that because Model Mayhem is, yes, it's got full of scams and full of GWCs and full of Bad situation. Explain that. But we'll have to explain that at some point. Well, we'll get into that for the safety. Yeah, we'll get into the safety. But the best, the best thing about Model Mayhem is that even though it's got all that crap, pretty much everybody in the industry still has a Model Mayhem account, even though we all know it's crap. And there's a browse feature, so you click on the browse feature, it's you really type where you're, you're at, out of town or yeah, something. where you're going out of town, or you're brand new, and you say. I Nobody want a model, knows. but what, what do I do? Where do I go? I don't know any contacts. Yeah. You, you use that browse feature now again they change their rules. So that standard modeling rule for everybody is not something we can just tell you to do anymore. So by doing what we said, by taking nicer pictures of yourself, 
you're giving yourself a starting point and an opportunity to potentially have your to account accepted on Mall yeah. Mayhem or on Facebook, whatever you need to do, you just can reach out. I believe in. that you can, because I was talking to somebody about this recently, I believe you can, I don't think, I don't know if it's invite only or not. Okay. I know it's definitely approval. Oh, so, so it's approval. So if you so, look like you're trying at least to, to take it seriously, maybe that gives you a fighting chance? I think. I'm, I mean, honestly, well, I'm not sure. We'll, we'll have to amend this. Yeah. We'll have, maybe we'll put we'll, a little annotation we'll it up, yeah. <laughs> if, when we know what the actual thing it's is. Right here. Okay. <laughs> We're going to take that out. I don't know. Okay. But, that, I mean, that, that browse feature on Model Mayhem is seriously like one of the best things for a new model. Now, something that I do is I work with the models, with the models on Vampire Freaks and... Mod um, coordinator. Yeah, and, and I, went, I went out and I started another forum for the p models who want to learn to model. And what I do sometimes is when there's a model who says, I want to model, but I can't find a photographer, I'll go on my Model Mayhem account and I'll type in where they live and I'll them. send photographers to them. So, you know... That kind of leads into the next thing, which is networking. It's very it's not the easiest thing, but it's very difficult, and sometimes a lot of bullshit. Difficult but bullshit, <laughs> but a lot of problems that I seem to encounter. Since obviously I deal with this a lot, I go through a lot of models who want to be models through the through the cult that I work with oh, and everything. Yeah. People live in weird spots. Like we live in New York City, we're spoiled. Mm -hmm. You know, like. New Jersey and New York are yeah. saturated with photographers, like saturated. And models. Yeah, and, and models creative and, and everything. Everybody yeah. here is there's a photographer in every single town, and a lot of times if you live in Minnesota or Tennessee or, oh, or, or other places, you're just not you don't have that option yeah, like we have here. And you know there might not be, hey Porphyria, can you help me? Like she might not exist in your town or. Go, like, <laughs> You know what I mean? Another... I don't exist! <laughs> I don't exist. <laughs> but there might not be another another alternative model. If I'm having a problem with something, or I'm looking for a photographer, a photographer for a specific thing, or a specific style, I can ask her, I can ask, I can ask ten countless... different people oh, who are model friends. friends, and be like, do you know what... I mean, granted, like, situations like that don't really happen, but if they did, I, I have endless Clapera. resources here to ask people. And it's unfortunate that, you know, we're spoiled and it's hard for us to be like, just do this when but you don't live in New York City. The best thing I, I would say is to try to network via the internet. Yeah. And and then just people that are somewhat local and then you guys, you sort of like just build a community and like most of my close friends are models or photographers or creatives <laughs> and it's because of getting involved and even if that's a side effect, like uh, is somewhere soon we have the realistic expectations, oh, yeah. but even if you're not gonna necessarily become famous, you're lucky if you make a little bit of money. But if you get some good friends and some good experiences, and it helps your ego, like it, it's great for that reason alone. I mean, so yeah, if you can get, if you can either get on Model Mayhem or you know, Facebook is hard. The the being a creative professional on Facebook is. I find difficult. It's hard to really search photographers on Facebook, it's hard to really search models on Facebook, and if you do it's very hard to, to gear it towards just a certain areas. And area. we're actually very specifically talking about independent models, not agency. We don't right, necessarily right. have yeah. any we're, we're talking about becoming an alternative model, like doing yeah. what we do. But you know what, most of those scouting things, unless it's like I'm walking down the street clubs, and I see somebody. Though, oh, for clubs, alternative people, true. clubs you do network a lot in that situation. But it, again, it depends true. on where you live. Right. It, you it's might like, not have that, that asset. Works, but for us, we get a lot of. You might get a lot of gigs. You might make a lot of friends that you know you know for modeling, or new friends that you then model with because of that kind of the social circles that you all. And yeah, in. it's tough because again, we're trying to give you advice to anybody, and the situation that we're both in is the nearly ideal situation mm -hmm. and that, that's why we have so many alternative models here because it, it's it's the best situation we can be and we're in a spot where we have all these these, these resources so just to, to recap you want to start with trying to get some, some just decent photos of yourself where you feel comfortable in them where you look comfortable in them where you don't look like you're uncomfortable with the best lighting situation you can. Once you have those, I recommend making a couple different ones. I, I don't think you should just stand on a blank wall, change your outfit three times. I recommend, you know, go to a park, go to an industrial type location. Go, try and, like, look at photo shoots that people like us have done or all our friends have done or models in other places have done and just look at the location, just look at it and just, just come up with something. We understand you're not going to have the perfect location, the perfect everything, but you it's have playing. to fake it. You're just yeah. going to have to fake it. And when you have that, try and put in an application to Model Mayhem. 
If you can, great. If you can't, there's other ways. There's other ways. I mean, you can try and, like I said, I, I, run, I run the cult on Vampire Freaks. If you have a Vampire Freaks account, I'll put the link to the cult that you can join. And you can come to the cult, and you can come in there, and and me come or Come in her. there! Come in there! <laughs> no, no, don't. Don't do don't. that. Don't do that at all. <laughs> but you can come there, and um, either from me or from another model, just ask for the advice you're looking for, or ask, ask me to do a search for you, and I will. I mean, obviously I can't do them for endless people, but, you know, I, I, I do them. Yeah, you know, you go in there, you put a post up, and if I see it, I'll try to see it, and, um, you know, my, my name on there is just models, because I'm the admin, but sometimes I post as myself, too, depending on which account I'm in. And, uh, you know, I will try and help you if you're in that situation, but the ideal situation is to get you on Model Mayhem to start with, but if we can't do that, there are other options. Again, the second thing you can do is try and find another alternative model in your area. If you know, you can even message one of us on Facebook, see if we know, see if we're able. To, you know, just try and ask people, send people messages, send models messages. I mean, I wouldn't but ask also, a girl yeah. like in Denmark if she knows anybody like in Minnesota or like in California. I wouldn't do that. But just you know, look at where we're located. Try and see if you can find out where we're located or anybody's located, and just the question do you know any do you know any alternative models in this state do you know any alternative photographers in this state if you can find another model and I mean I think generally most alternative models are pretty friendly Fair from the friendly. start I mean like if you're going to somebody who's really really popular your message might get lost but I, I would just try and ask just say you hey from do you know anybody in can go with? place when you ask and it's not presumptuous or it's not um, you going to someone where you feel like they owe you an answer? Oh yeah, no. Then, then there's no reason not to. Everyone is, you know, everyone has been in that place at some point, you know. And if nothing else, just look at their profile, see what photographers are with, watermarked yeah. in their photos. If it says blah 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 photography dot com, go to blah 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 photography dot com and then send, and send them a message, message. Yeah. and see how much their rates are, and just try and just look around. You have you have to have time you to get what you put into look. it. Yeah, absolutely. Definitely. It's 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 gonna be time to do me. If you don't live in an, in New York City or you know, LA I or big areas. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay, yeah. If you don't live in, if you don't live in like a big area that's like really populated with creative type of things, then you're gonna have a harder time, and it's just it's the reality of the situation. And really, we're like way overdoing this, and we're gonna move on to the next okay. topic. Okay. Booking your first shoot, um, we're gonna talk about some some standard words um, like it used to be TF. P. It used TFT. to be TFP, which is for time, time for, for print. print. But now but it's TFCD. No, then it was TFCD, but like, which is time it, for it's funny CD. because through but our people, modeling, yeah. it's changed. So it was TFP at the beginning, which is for time for print. Uh, if I use the word TFP, I use it as time for pictures. Yeah, I but think that generally, really if you like hear it either. still, you say time for print, but it it it, 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 it means you're going to get those pic the trade. Is that you model for images? That's what that essentially right. means. Right, because then it was it was TFCD, which was t for a CD or pictures, but not even with the the way that we can send pictures over the internet now, which has progressed over the past couple of years. Nobody is gonna really give you a CD anymore. It's and so old. <laughs> it's, it's actually I, I didn't even think of it till right now either. It's actually kind of weird how it's progressed. But I mean, but generally majority, when we hear TFP, you know that it means, or if you contact someone saying that, it means that you. You're doing a trade, like you're doing your model, it, your the, ability it to model in exchange for, for, for it, pictures. It means, it means mutually it free. It means for free without saying for free. Because for free sounds meaning it doesn't it's, sound that Yeah, word. it's presumptuous. It means, hey, will you shoot with me for free? No, I will not shoot with you for free. <laughs> yes, I will shoot with you for free. But when you say TF TFP, it yeah, sounds like you're bringing something in right. exchange. It's in a trade. So you're saying that I'm I'm going to model for you in exchange for the pictures. Right. Rather than saying, I need your services, give them to me. For I free. generally just say trade. Yeah, trade, trade works. I just use the word trade. That's so that's what you would want for your first shoot. Um, if you can. Ideally, I mean, ideally. Yeah. Maybe if you have to pay for your first shoot, that's fair enough too. We were talking about that before. Sometimes you have to if you want some good pictures. But I mean, I, find I've of, never in my entire yeah. life ever paid for any photos except mm -hmm. for my wedding photos. So my first photo shoot, and when you're doing the first photo shoot, you just, you're going to have to experiment with photographers. Experiment, and, but you have to like look at the level that you're at, which is basically really zero. Start. And you need to look at photographers who are at basically zero, and it's unfortunate because it's like you're not gonna feel like you're, you're getting really a, yeah too. like you're gonna look for people who are at the same place as you because you're not gonna just get like a level five if you're at level zero like it's just not. And gonna one happen. thing that's beautiful and potentially that could happen in that situation is that you get someone who's starting with you and learns at the same pace as you, and you can basically be their muse in a way like mm -hmm. you're both growing together and you're making a work working relationship, and that can last for years. Yeah, and you guys can grow and get better together for years and get really good together, hypothetically. 
I mean, there's a lot of combos I've seen oh, that, yeah. that that happens with. Or some of our friends that's happened with too, where we we start with someone and we see them grow as a photographer, or even model, even yeah, models even as model. who, who we you know we see them grow as working with us or with our friends or you know. Like I said, in our situation, we have a very big network, a big group. There's a lot of us who are relative to the situation where we live. But just don't be afraid to to shoot with someone who you might not think is amazing, because but they have the equipment and they have the enthusiasm mm -hmm. because they will grow with you. Not only don't be afraid, but expect to have yeah, to do that. Yeah, expect that. That's what you're like, going to get. That's what you need to do. Like, it's not really like a, you know... Unless you have a lot of potential and you get lucky enough to see the photographer finds you that wants to work TFP because they like your look. Yeah. But that that's also rare. It's rare, yeah. yeah. Like, you're going to be looking for somebody who is a college student, a guy yeah. who's taking up a, a, it's a, a new hobby, a guy who's retired and started started being a photographer. You know, you're going to end up, you're not going to get the photographers that we work with or the photographers above us or even... Yeah a step below us on your first photo shoot. It's just, it's mm -hmm. not gonna happen. And if you go into it expecting that, you're gonna, you're gonna be, be very disappointed. But, um, okay, so another really, really super important one, um, point is safety! Yeah, so let's pretend that, that, that you, you email someone, you say, hey, are you up for doing a, a, a trade shoot with me? Are you up for doing a TFP shoot with me? I really, I really like your work. work. Um, you know, I live, I live nearby. Um, I really wanna start modeling. What do you think? Blah, blah. And they're like, yeah, sure. Then the most important thing that you have to say to yourself Red is... Flags is can I bring a chaperone or can I bring an, a, escort. an escort and they can be another model or they will either way they'll be silently there non-intrusive and think about that too I mean think about the person you're gonna bring with you you're you need to fake it till you make it you need to be professional yes this yes. is your first photo shoot with somebody who might be their second third fourth photo shoot but you, you have to, to hold yourself to the yourself. standards that you want to be. Absolutely. And if you bring your boyfriend who's like, I don't want you wearing that, um, oh, can you get this angle? And you want somebody or who's going to sit oh, yeah, someone yeah. that's going to sit there the and shut up. Like, that's it. You need to yeah. say to your friend, I love you, but sit there and shut up. Like, that's you're what you need. Basically, a friend that, that loves you or cares about you enough to make sure that you're not doing something dumb or going to get hurt and just has your back in case that the photographer is, you know, has bad intentions. Because again, it's like, you're, you're going to be working with new people, and new people might not have worked with one of us who we can say, hey, you know what, that guy's great. You know what? And, and he, if you see somebody that we worked with, chances are, if we yeah. worked with them more than once, you could probably feel safe with them. And but that's if not, you, you know, can't bring a chaperone, make sure at least that you can have a reference, which is another model that you can um, talk to, or you, some model that you know of at least, you've heard of, that has worked with them. But really, honestly, your first photo shoot, you if really somebody says someone. to you, don't know, you can't bring an escort, red flag, don't, don't work with them. And you know what? It might be fine, but... Hypothetically, but it's not worth it's it. It's not and worth we, it. We don't want you doing that. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> Take and care of yourself. Disclaimer, disclaimer, disclaimer. We are not responsible for any <laughs> bad decisions you make because of this video, just just for the record. We're but telling we're you right now, we're don't do your first, safest, don't yeah. take your first, second, third photo shoot without an escort or a reference or a reputable reference or... Be smart. A, a, you know, because even you might see somebody that one of us has worked with and we might have hated them, but they might have been an asshole and they might have, they might have grabbed her ass and made her and she might have left them in a little photo shoot, but she got a picture back that she liked, but you know what? we would tell you not to work with them. Yeah, so, so you might want to, if you do see a model that you recognize, send them a message and say what was it like working with them. You might not get a, an answer back, but for the most part you will. Because we all have each other's back. Especially if something went wrong. Yeah, you're more likely especially. to get a message back if, if it's shady. Because, yeah. actually, with me recently, there was a photographer I was thinking about working with, and I didn't know anybody he had worked with, and it was kind of strange because he was located in Brooklyn, and so, like, yeah, to, we tend to, to know no models that he's worked with. I messaged... I, I, I found information and messaged three of the models in his portfolio, and they got back to me, but they got back to me like a month later. So I didn't shoot with them. Because you know what? I didn't I didn't understand why this was somebody who was right on, uh, he was shooting alternative type photography, know, yeah. and he didn't shoot any of the models I know. That, yeah, not shooting people we know. And, it, and that, to me, that not that it, you know, he might have been fine. It might have been fine, but I'm not gonna put myself in that situation. At this point in my modeling, I almost never go to a photo shoot with somebody because I just, I, I have no yeah. need for it and I find it distracting and if it's not a makeup artist friend or a model friend or I, I'm just, there's, I'm not, I'm not going to bring my least, husband to a photo shoot. It's a little bit different also for us in particular <coughs> because again, with the knowing everybody, we tend to know at least somebody that the photographer shot with. So like if one of our, our close friends has shot with someone, there's no way that, it, I mean. 
it's not a worry for us really. Again, I mean, if we again, totally run it by us, them, if, yeah. if, if only like one person had shot with them, I'd probably run it by yeah. them. But I might just comment and say, hey, I'm shooting with blah 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 next How'd week. How'd that go? And then it, yeah. wait for them to say whatever they want to say. So just be careful. I mean, you just hear this stuff sense. all the time. I mean, Model Mayhem has been on the news more than once of people getting raped, murdered, kidnapped. It's happened on Model Mayhem. It's it has happened on Craigslist. It's concerned with your it's safety happened. first. And I think she mentioned earlier the abbreviation G. Oh, a GWC. GWC. <laughs> guy with camera. Which means not a photographer, just a guy with a camera. A guy who thinks that he can make lots of pretty friends because he has a camera and get lots of girls naked and they owe it to him and that he can tell touch a girl's titty because she's a nude model. Yeah. Avoid the guys with cameras. Look for photographers. <laughs> and like we're mentioning, that's a really big red flag is the chaperone because why would someone have an issue with a quiet assistant who can actually help them in the long run because they can hold up um, Reflectors, right. they can get carry gear. If they're quiet, who, what do they care? I mean, I have heard some stories and photographers do have situations happen. Them. Photographers have had things stolen from them. Photographers had, have had an escort come and rob them while they're doing a photo shoot. You know, it has happened and I can understand why some people might say wary. no, but when they make the decision to say no, they yeah. have to understand that they're cutting their clientele, they're cutting, cutting, cutting their, their models they're going to work with in half. Because if somebody says to you, that, that you cannot bring an escort, or if it even says them on, on their model profile, no escorts allowed, I would not even contact that person. If it's big, bold letters, I've seen it before, like, no escorts allowed on photo shoots, like, I wouldn't contact them. Because why don't, why don't, why? Like, what, if, was, if you don't have a note that says, yeah. like, says, like, some reason, then, you know. Yeah. Because there's no reason that I couldn't bring her as my escort to a photo shoot. So, if there's a couple weird little cuts here, it's because the camera, not behaving. Basically what I'm just saying is if there's a photographer you want to work with and they say no escorts, you know, it's not 110% a deal breaker, it's not 110% that they're a GWC that they're going to rape you or kidnap you. I would just say if you want to work with them, use your best judgment. Use your best judgment and I would inquire and I would say, how, you know, I, I know your profile says no escorts but I'd really like to work with you and how would you feel if I brought my sister? How would you feel if I brought this, my makeup artist? How would you feel if I brought my... Someone, an assistant. Yeah, you, you just, you want to give them a title that's not friend, boyfriend. boyfriend. Even parent is, you know, some photographers Great. are okay with it, some photographers aren't. And it's like, if you can get a makeup artist or a wardrobe stylist, those are probably the two best things. Even, I even if you're lying. The, the few times where I, I did kind of want to give them the benefit of the doubt, and I did, those were the, the photographers that were the creepiest. So I just, in, in our experience, it tends to be that it, there is a reason that they don't, you know. And, yeah. and, and so we're just advising from a standpoint of having had experience that, that generally if someone says that, that there is a reason why they're saying that. Learning to be comfortable um, in front of the camera. Yeah, I mean, if you, of course you want to be comfortable in the situation by having an escort, but you have to also just be comfortable mm -hmm. in front of the camera. And a couple ways that really help is, is playing music, especially something that you really just enjoy. Or just something that has a beat of what you want. Like, you don't want to play, like, slow songs if you're modeling, like, alternative fashion. energy. Yeah. And especially if it's it relates to what you're wearing or what you're shooting, that's really great. And, like... If you're shooting a theme, like, definitely, like, if there's, like... If you're shooting a cosplay thing, if you can get something, something that's similar that, that, to that. Yeah, like, totally good. If you can Mood get that. out, get in the atmosphere. Um, and also a really good tip is to, in between shoots, like shots rather, if the, the photographer futs in with the camera or fixing lighting, just like dance to the music yeah, or just shake, shake your hands, and shake everything your out. jaw because especially if you're new and especially in the beginning of a shoot, any shoot, you're going to be a little bit more tense mm -hmm. and as the shoot goes on you warm up a little bit more but also just every now and then you'll, sometimes you lock up in a pose and it's just good to shake out and... Mm -hmm. And also, don't take yourself too seriously. Oh yeah, no. There's no, always no. they can they they'll delete a picture if it's bad. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> always know? like you want to over exaggerate. Like if you need to make like like one of the more I think harder things about alternative modeling, which I guess is kind of a gray area if it's alternative, model, is being a pinup model. And like you have to really no, exaggerate. Like serious. if you think that you're making the face, double it. Like you got you really have point to those like, toes. Oh yes, mm -hmm. pointed toes. Pop that pointed back. Toes. Pop Make the your butt, butt. Off the <laughs> back in, butt out, <laughs> suck it in. If it, you're gonna be a little uncomfortable. <laughs> oh yeah. You're gonna be sore the next day, and that's yeah. that means you did it right. Not to, not to start a whole other topic, but that is another stigma that modeling is easy. 
it's not easy. You will if you, you if you do it, next you will hurt the next day. <laughs> Uh, but uh, I mean, if you're new, a lot of look look at other modeling. Look at what oh, you yeah. like. Try, try to try to analyze why you like it. Um, look at different poses. Get inspiration. And I mean, eventually, after a long time, it becomes muscle memory. Like we'll, oh, we'll, yeah. we'll just pose, pose. You hear the camera clicking. You go to a different one after mm -hmm. one or two clicks. Like, but in the very beginning, you need to build the library in your head of what looks good. And, oh, and also, when you get your photos back, you're gonna be like, wow, that flex. pose was really flattering. That face is really flattering. However, that can also be dangerous because when, when you see that and you say, wow, posing like this makes me look good, your face, you're, gonna you're always, always going to do this in and every I mean, you are going to have sort of like the thing that you always do. Mm -hmm. Like I have like this crawly on the floor thing with my leg up that I always do and I'm like some pin up poses I see you do a lot and it becomes it's because you're good at it but you have to just have, I have to have a repertoire of other things too. Oh yeah, it's, it's extremely easy. It's like when we're dealing with models on Vampire Freaks, like, that happens a lot. That it's like, this is a decent model, her poses are okay, but her face is the same face in every photo. And again, you're growing, you're learning, that's fine because you're, you know, you're seeing what is good for you, but you have to go out of your comfort zone. It's very easy to fall, to be uncomfortable and then fall very quickly into a very specific mm -hmm. comfort zone and then not remember that you have to still continue to branch out. Even though, you know, your first photo shoot you might have had 10 pictures that you felt really ugly in and maybe two pictures that you're like, wow, I look good there. You still need to do all those other things again. And you still need to, I mean, maybe adjust a little bit, maybe adjust the, you know, your eyes, your, your yeah, different makeup. dead eyes you is a big really thing. really have to the, do that. The, the Tara, the America's Next Top Model, the, the Tyra smile, smile thing, yes. thing. Yeah, it's, it's like. It's true. It's very true. You smile with your you eyes. You smile like, with your eyes. <laughs> it's, I mean, and, and also every now and then like just unclench your jaw and, uh, and like make a silly face try to force laugh and then let it go um <laughs> yeah like a smirk and like a <laughs> practice your faces it's fun but you have to be silly with it like Dynamic, and, and like yeah. you're gonna feel silly like and but if it's a bad picture they can delete yeah, it like it's said. not that big of a deal like okay but this is the other thing and this is the the worst thing that i feel like new alternative models do and i feel like no what no what <laughs> is that you, you think, okay, I'm an alternative model, so this is what I have to do. I have to do Cliches. an Alice in Wonderland shoot, I have to do a goth fairy shoot, I have to do... And uh, even though we did it, the a, graveyard shoot. The graveyard <laughs> shoot. But you know what? Graveyard shoots have their time and place. It's just, don't just and go... And cliches happen for a reason, yeah. but don't just okay. go, don't yeah, rely yeah. on them. But I That's see all. so many alternative models. Yeah. They go to, like, modern-day cemeteries, and they pose yeah. on graves that are not even, like, interesting, and it's like, they just go to the cemetery tomorrow, and it's like... That's fine if you're trying something out, but when I look at when yeah. I as a model like coordinator for Vampire Breaks, I'm looking at your portfolio. And it's just like you want to roll your eyes. Every photo is in a graveyard, in the same graveyard, and it's a, a modern day graveyard. I know that's kind of a strange thing, but if it's a modern day graveyard, like it looks like you're like, like you, you have you just flags didn't get and, it the, and the plastic yeah, flowers like, and the. Like, Kitsch, if you remember from our, which isn't meant from, to be. I don't even have one. But if you remember from calendar, our calendar, like a, the picture on the front is a graveyard. Now, look at that picture. It has these old, you put it up. from the 1800s photo, um, gravestones in the back. They're very aesthetically pleasing. They're grungy. They're peely. They, they have texture to them. There's something visually interesting about them, which makes doing that photo shoot and doing shooting in that graveyard. And doing the cliche. Yeah, making it a visually interesting and professional image, but instead of just let me go stomp around these solid stones, which really doesn't look. I mean, it can. Don't get me wrong. They have their place. They, they. It's not the end of the world, but it's just, just try to try to don't be always you do it. and try to find you, and and don't rely heavily on these crutches of what it's expected of yes. alternative. As a matter of fact, if you can stay away from them, stay away from them. And I mean, there are a lot of fashion cliches that we both do, but it's. I mean, you also can't avoid things that you enjoy and you like. You you sure. should also, as with anything in life, just because other people do it don't, doesn't mean that you shouldn't do it. Like um, the corsets, we we tend to oh, enjoy. Yeah, I enjoy PVC, but just be be aware of what exists and don't you know, don't rely on other, don't copy other people's work verbatim. Oh yeah. Be inspired by, oh, no. don't copy. Oh, people that, will know where you got it, one. especially if it's a a, a really well known model. Mm -hmm. We will know, like, and, and it makes a bad name for yourself. If Not only that, but on Model Mayhem, if you are to get a Model Mayhem account, there's, there's an option to add pictures to lists. And a lot of people who t are, like, new models oh, tend yeah. to make lists that say, photos I want to copy, pictures yeah, I, want to I want to redo. To do. Yeah. I will go in and I check who, who puts my name in the list and I will take my photos out of your list. Because 
That's, that's not, that, it's not what you want to do. People think that's flattering, but you, there's a very clear difference between copying and being inspired, inspired by. And you want to be inspired by making your own and, and make it so the, the traces of it you can sort of see, but not enough that you, you can tell who you were inspired by. Right. Make it, yeah, like, if you saw a photo, it's not, I want to copy the exact outfit, the lighting, the how the hair was done. You could say, oh, that your hair in that one picture was really pretty. I might want to do a style somewhat similar to that in a set in the future. And so then, do your hair like that, yeah. wear a different outfit, go to different locations, shoot in a different lighting thing. Just, there's, there's ways Just to be, be inspired you. by certain mm -hmm. things, yeah. and even copy certain things, but don't try and Bring cre it new. recreate the same image. And like, like she said, inspiration is what you should be doing. You should be looking at pictures and getting inspired by them. You should be looking at models and getting inspired by their poses. You should be looking at outfits and being inspired by them. But you're not copying them. And that's really... I understand there's like a, like a fine line there and like a hard distinction to some degree, but you don't want to copy. You want to inspire. Right. Like, be inspired. You definitely don't get another model's tattoos and do oh, her hair. Yeah. No. And then, and, and no. no, I had that happen. No. no. That's not flattery. That goes no, past no, flattery. No, no, no. 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 Be That's you. Fun. That's the whole point. It's fun. Be you. Oh, yes. No. No, 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 no. I think that, that, that pretty much covers the first um, part of the 101 we wanted to do. The only other thing I can think yeah. of is um, when you're doing your photo shoots, um, just briefly, let's just briefly go into like styling because you, oh, if yeah, you're yeah. your first, first photo shoot, you want to get the most out of it as you can. And there's just a couple quick things. There's there's you know, basically clothing, hair, and makeup. Makeup, makeup you either want to hire a makeup artist for your first shoot. M U A M U A M U A makeup artist. Another Bird. abbreviation. Bird. Um, hairstylist. It depends on what your hair looks like. Um, if you do your hair every day and you like how it looks, and you mm -hmm. know your styles. Yeah, I mean... Every now and then, though, it's it's nice to experience a makeup artist or a hairstylist, mm -hmm. even if you know your own style and like to style yourself, because it brings something totally different to the, oh, yeah. to the table. I personally, drawing my own eyebrows on, fucking hate makeup artists doing them. Oh, yeah. They make ridiculous eyebrows. I, That's I, just I, my Most experience. people who have drawn on eyebrows, I've heard, all don't like other parts doing yeah. They just don't know what, like, what's, yeah, you know, what, used to how you it's do It's a it. hard thing to do. I, I couldn't draw your eyebrows <laughs> on. Like... But, I mean, at the same time, it's nice to, I'm sure that every, you've experienced having a makeup artist do your makeup and been like, I would never think to do this. This is actually kind of fun. Yeah, every it, now it has its place. I honestly um, have a strong preference against makeup artists. Um, it's just my own personal problems, you know, my own personal experience of negative situations. Yeah. And um, Makeup artists, don't reuse false eyelashes. That shit is nasty. Yeah, please, if you go to a makeup artist if it's and, yours, and, and you they can. pick up something that's used, um, run away or say excuse me I have very sensitive eyes or something I, I can't use a I can't reuse a product make up whatever Brushes you can and sponges need to be cleaned but don't, yeah or like, cleaned up like you really they can be like, like reused really to, to look cleaned. at what's being touched on you you can buy your own eyelashes and you can reuse yeah, your own eyelashes you can reuse your own brushes it's whatever like if it's for debatable you debatable around how many times but yeah. I, I've heard some people can even like if they keep them good can use them 10 times yeah. but but it's that's different because it's your, your own not somebody else's you don't want to oh, no. oh no like I don't want to take eyelashes off and give them to her. No. No. I can rewear these if I clean them, but yeah. no. But no. No, no. So if no. you see a makeup artist who has dirty kits and wants is reusing something, you a makeup no. artist should be opening eyelashes out of a package and they're putting them on you. Or you should be bringing your own package with you. In my model case, I have eyelashes, yeah, that's true. nail polish, nail polish remover. That's actually a good point um, to talk about the basic things you might want to bring with you. Yeah, so like you're saying, uh, you might want a, a solid, a couple solid nail polishes, maybe just for emergencies, quick dry. What I what I keep definitely always have is a makeup uh, nail polish remover because you might not have time to paint yet. your nails, but you'll have time to remove chipped nail polish. So I think that's a. They make a little ones that are wipes. So I always have a makeup remover wipe, I mean a makeup remover wipe and a, a nail polish remover wipe. Um, that's the um, main extra thing. Extra hair ties, clips. extra clips. But and if you're having a makeup artist, I. Either way, honestly, I recommend you do have a set of false eyelashes yeah, just in your have bag. Them. Have them handy. Um, you never know. But I mean, if somebody pulls out used ones, right. don't accept them going on your eyes. I don't care what, how timid you are, whatever kind of a person you are. You don't want some don't put those on your infection. eyes. Infection. Because it's nasty. It's happened to me. Yeah. And it's happened to uh, girls we know, lots of models, multiple other models that we know personally in our area. Yeah. By the same makeup we won't artists, drop names of the makeup <laughs> artists, but we know, so, uh, we know, 
and we don't go to you. Oh, so don't do that. Else not to go to you because you give at least three of our friends an eye infection. After I, it happened to me, I told them, don't go to her. They went to her anyway. Situational things. Yeah. Hand, you know. Be careful with makeup. But the other thing is, is if you don't know how to do your makeup, it, it's kind it's of kind a gray of good area. to learn. You, you need to it's learn. Kind of good to learn. Um, you need to know that. You need to know and how to do your makeup. And it's another situation with the inspiration. Like you, you can look at other people's pictures to, to learn how to do makeup and, and see what you like, and then pr uh, experiment with it and make it your own. Yeah, because that's what's part part of the fun of modeling too, especially alternative modeling, is that you get to experiment with yeah. all that. And I mean, like if, if you're if you have a great photo shoot and you take a solid pink shadow and you draw from here to here solid pink and take a line and draw a straight line across your eye you're gonna ruin your photo like you're just you're gonna ruin your photo so this is like a topic we could really like cover forever really we could probably go hours about this so we're gonna make this two videos so part one basically just start with taking some pictures that are not professional but get them as professional as you possibly can good lighting somebody somebody you're comfortable around outside that's your best option then if you can get onto model mayhem if you can't look for other models in your area through facebook through anything any avenue you can find any connections they can help you yeah with. or look for other other model situations that you can that you can get involved in again vampire freaks if you go to vampire freaks you can go to the the model cult that i have that that you can come for model help which again i'll put the link again um which is just something else that can help you and even i might be able to personally help you um so then once you've gotten that you want to start networking 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 and more networking um and then and you, you want more flies with honey like uh, don't assume that you're going to get something from someone oh yeah be, be kind and you'll Absolutely. be surprised with what you get back yeah. type so of just deal. have your attitude totally in check be humble be professional be on time be don't flake out just be exactly what you aspire to be in the future if, you know if you're if, if you were the best alternative model getting paid for everything think about how you'd have to act to be that person you got to be on time you got to be professional you got to have your you got to know how to do your own hair you got to be charming you do your own makeup you got <laughs> to have a, a personality that someone's going to want to be around you you know you even have to have you know collect your wardrobe think about your wardrobe develop your style and really just work on all of those things and once your first photo shoot is done then that'll we'll talk about in video too <laughs> <laughs> So, um, yeah, and... Oh, and, and be safe. Be very and safe. Be safe.